1997, Bruce Deal went to Atlanta to serve for a few months with the closing of a church. A few weeks into his assignment, a woman in the congregation asked him a question. And 22 years later, Bruce is still answering the needs of the poor and disenfranchised. Bruce Deal is the founder and CEO of City of Refuge, an organization he founded in 1997, built on the principle of trust. Since then, Bruce has helped over 20,000 people in one of Georgia's toughest neighborhoods escape the cycles of homelessness, joblessness, and drug abuse by giving them second chances. In his book, Trust First, Bruce shares the success stories as well as the failures of drug addicts, ex-cons, and human trafficking survivors, and the reasons why his City of Refuge model is being copied in cities across the country. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Bruce Deal, also known as Ghetto Rev. That's my son. <laughs> Talk about that woman who asked you the question, what did she ask you and who was she, Bruce? You know, we had been at our assignment about five or six weeks. We thought it was a six month assignment. And at the end of a service, a young lady walked forward and tears were streaming down her face as she simply took me by the hands. And her statement was, I've been hooking and stripping 14 years. Can you help me get out of the life? And we said yes that morning, and that opened the door for her to begin bring more people in crisis who invited more, who invited more. But it was that first conversation with one young lady in crisis who simply said, can you help me? So how did it go from a woman asking you this question to you moving your family into the heart of the inner city and living Sure. Well, we, we accepted the pastorate after about four months and, and started City of Refuge at the same time. And a few months later, actually, my wife called me one morning out of her quiet time, and uh, she was in tears. And she said, if we're really going to impact a community, we should be among the community and live there. And so one of my favorite verses of Scripture in John 2, in one of the translations says, the Word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> and so we simply bought that and, and decided to move in. So after some uh, maneuvering, we ended up moving into the third floor of the 65-year-old church building with our four daughters at the time. Wow. What, what was the effect of that on your family? Because it had to be an adjustment. Well, it was an adjustment. We had someone try to steal our van the first night we lived there. And the first time I filled up the baptismal pool, there was actually a homeless guy living in the sanctuary under the baptismal pool. Uh, we lived there for six years and had almost three dozen break-ins and vehicles stolen and uh, threats on our life. So our daughters grew up. Our fifth daughter was born while we lived there. They grew up with this full worldview, though, because we had donors to the organization. They got to go to a great private Christian school. Yeah. Then they would come home, and we would literally have homeless folks and folks that we had rescued from prostitution or trafficking sitting at the dinner table. So the effects were sometimes a little scary, but overall dramatically changed their focus on life and helped them become who they are today. And one of the things that had such an impact on this was that you and your staff practiced something you call radical trust. What is that? Well, Radical Trust is starting each day with a clean slate. So when you come into our organization, we, we have to know what the past was, but we don't hold the past against you mm -hmm. as we determine what the future will look like. And so rather than you having to prove to us that we should trust you, at City of Refuge, you have to actually have to prove to us that we shouldn't trust you. And it was just a reverse way of doing things. And folks in crisis, we found that opened the door to their hearts. It sounds like Jesus with skin on. <laughs> it does. It surely does. You developed something called a one-stop shop against opposition. But what is that and how does it work? Well, a one-stop shop, after those first six years, we were donated a facility in the worst neighborhood in all of Georgia from a crime perspective, homeless perspective, abandoned houses. And we just determined those first six years that if somebody in crisis has to make multiple appointments at multiple organizations, meet with multiple case managers, it's just such a long, arduous task that they often would weary in the journey and abandon their journey to recovery and self-sufficiency. And so the idea was, what if we put all those services on one campus, find the best in class and multiple offerings, put it on one campus. It's been dramatic over the last 16 years to see somebody walk on campus and have housing, medical, mental health, dental vision, vocational training, parenting classes, financial literacy classes, all on the same campus with the worship experience is something that's certainly available to them as well. It seems so practical. Why did you have opposition to this? Uh, you know, I think it was just different. A lot of times different people go, I'm not sure. Folks, you know, early on folks said, we think you should do one thing and do it really well. Focus on one thing. And and I've, I've 
my, my response to that was we're going to do one thing really well, and that's life transformation. And that takes multiple offerings for us to get right. to transformation. And, and you got to hang in there, don't you? You well, know. obedience, we, our phrase is borrowed from Eugene Peterson, one of his quotes. We've tweaked it a little. Obedience is simply a long, slow walk in the same direction. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You serve people, but you don't just serve them. They ultimately become family in the program that you've adapted. How does that work, and how is it working? Well, it works well most of the time. Uh, you know, most of the folks that we deal with are disenfranchised, so they come from broken environments. They don't have a support system. So when they find a group, group and, and my wife, my five daughters, uh, the men that they've married, you know, we've decided to embrace everyone. And so we become dad or mom or sister or brother. And, and most of the time that works really well. The family environment seems to create this opportunity for moving forward in a positive direction versus an institutional approach. And, and I know in this scenario that often there's relapse. You know, so many people, when they're discouraged, when they are disenfranchised, get involved, get through the day, even using drugs, alcohol. Once someone relapses, how do you go back to that trust level that you had before? Because it's not just one relapse sometimes, it's multiple in the journey out. Yeah, and one of the things we try to do is not categorize failure, mm. right? So I still fail in my life. There's still things that, that I, there's still places in my life as a husband or a father or a leader of an organization that I fail in. Yeah. But I don't get kicked out of those places as a husband or father or leader of an organization because I fail. And so we've just decided that your failure may look uh, more tragic than mine, but at the end of the day, it's just one step of failure. Now let's take a step of success. So again, there's a limit that at some points we have to draw the line, but for the most part, we're going to walk with you as long as it takes. Do you see the church embracing some of what you've structured here and uh, in other places? I, I do. Uh, we're in multiple locations around the country. Uh, we still find that the church is sometimes a little uh, protective of itself. Yes. So when you start bringing in the clientele that we work with on a daily basis, there can be a bit of nervousness arise on occasion. Well, the book is well worth the read. It's called Trust First, a true story about the power of giving people second chances. And boy, isn't that the gospel. Thank you so much for being with us today. Pretty book to get a hold of it.